this is Gauri Kapoor and today we are shooting for White TV. So we are having a fun shoot today. We have Lana with us who is a model for today and she's from Serbia. Hi. So today as I told you we are doing a fun shoot and I am starting off with the foundation for starters. So we are trying to use a um, pop of colors today. I'm applying and I'm just trying to blend it out. So I'm just buffing the foundation in so it doesn't look like we would like too much. I had already prepped the skin. Concealer, and I'm going to the next step, which is contouring. I'm going to do a very subtle contouring because I'm giving her a very uh, neutral look on her face. You can see as we progress what we thought. Now we'll get to the eyes. I'm keeping the eyes as a very neutral, lazy color. I'm going to put the eyes in the middle. So we can get a very good motion of the There's a lot of purple and using a purple mixed with pink. You can see the definition is there, but still not there. So now we're getting to the fun part. We've changed the lighting and you can see how much of a difference the right lighting can make. We were working with lesser light earlier, now it's a perfect light. It just changes the entire look. So now we're getting to the fun part, where we add color to her face. I'm using a purple mascara. And when we do concept makeup, it's always it's how we do it.
done with our makeup and now let's get to the second part of it where we're going to be uh, putting a wig on her. So now we're getting to the final part where we transform Lana into a colourful, vibrant supermodel. So how do you like the look Nala? I like everything purple. I think that I will start to wear it. Lovely. Wait yeah. for your final look. So I really feel beautiful and I really feel amazing in this look. Great makeup looks effortlessly beautiful. And today I have someone with me who masters the art of doing just that. Are you thinking about customizing your makeup looks for any occasions? Be it events, parties, weddings or even high-end fashion shows? Well, I have just the right name for you. Gauri Kapoor, Bangalore's top makeup artist. Hi. This is Priyanka and welcome to the show Makeover, your gateway to know more about makeup from the pros. Hi Kauri, how are you today? Hi Priyanka, I'm doing very well. You're looking lovely. Oh my god, thank you. You look gorgeous by the way. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so how has your day been so far? Hectic. Absolutely, whenever there's a shoot, it's always hectic. Yeah. But I love that. <laughs> Great. Okay, so that's the makeup look that you've done for us today, haven't you? Yes. That's the look that she I've looks created. beautiful. Thank you. It's very different, I must say. It's very different, very unique. Well, that's what I try to always aim to be different. That's what sets you apart, right? Yeah, very so, true. Yeah. Okay, so what was your inspiration behind this look? So I think as an artist, we can get an inspiration from um, anything. So with this look, I actually, I travel a lot and I love to just pick up unusual things along the way. So I have this little goodie bag that I create. And every time I have something interesting, it goes into that. And whenever I want to create a look, I kind of get more creative with it and try to, you know, come up with something. So here I had the flowers and after which I made a case mm -hmm. where I wanted to give it some shape over the head. So I basically was trying to make a headgear, but I also wanted to make an interesting color. So the color really fascinated me where it was white and purple. So um, I made a headgear and I just kind of put it all together. And that's how we work. We make the headgear and then we work towards the makeup. Wow. So that's what we've done today. And Lana's been great. By the way, that's Lana and she's from Serbia and she's been a fabulous model today. Glad to meet you, Lana. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Hi, Lana. Hi. Okay, I must tell you, you look gorgeous today. Thank you. How do you, how do you feel in this look? Uh, I feel really pretty. This look is amazing, it's interesting, it's totally something new and wonderful. It is, it is. It's very unique yes. and very different. I haven't seen anything like this before. That's what I aim at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me, how long did it take you to do this look? Well, I would say it took me to get the headgear ready. Uh, it took me about two hours. But then, you know, we, I did it in installments. But there are times when uh, we have looks where we've made the model sit for five hours to eight hours. Wow. So it really depends on the concept that we come up with. So um, depending on that is where the time frame really lies. Because when it's all oriented towards makeup, it's all about makeup. So there's so much that you can do with makeup. And that's what I really love doing. Yeah. Exploiting makeup. I mean, who would have thought you could come up with a look like this with just makeup? I mean, Absolutely. nobody really does that these days. Yeah, it's an inspiration you take from somewhere. It's what you create. And then you complement the makeup to it. That's what makeup artistry is all about. Yeah, yeah. 
so what was your inspiration like uh, did you look at lana and then decide on the look or you did you have a look in mind and then you just like well in this case yes i had a look in mind but even when i have my academy um, shoots we have a look we come up with specific looks and then we fit the model to it that's okay. what we generally do okay and you come up with these concepts yourself yes if it's with the academy it's me and the team together obviously i have to help them execute it but yes it's always very interesting because this is the concept that i really love doing where you know you're playing with colors that's what you love doing somewhere i think through the lines you just get bored with doing just the same thing so you want to experiment you want to be different you want to try something new all the time and you have to keep reinventing yourself it's not about just you know if i started off with bridal makeup i want to just continue that that's a part but you keep getting better at that in a separate way and in fashion in a separate way true true very well said thank you <laughs> Okay um so Gauri you've done both um if i may say that you've uh, done bridal makeup you've also covered very high end fashion makeup what do you prefer i would say i would prefer both because even if you look at my brides i always like to make my bride bride stand apart so i don't like to do the normal i don't like to do the ordinary so i'm always trying to get experimental but obviously not experimental to a point yes we have made mistakes no one's perfect <laughs> from the time you start but uh, you know as we progress you you kind of get better at your art so i would say bridal gives me a different kind of a satisfaction but fashion is what uh gives you you know it's it's fun it's you, there is no boundary you can do whatever you want and i think that's what an artist any artist would enjoy when there are no boundaries and no limitations yeah great okay so when did makeup creep into your life when was that one <laughs> moment where makeup? it just sneaked into your life and you just suddenly knew that okay you know what i love this i love what i'm doing i think it subtly creeped into my life <laughs> if i may say so but um uh, when um i was about 22 and i was Ooh. married and i remember i used to look at stardust at those point of times you didn't have vogue and you know all right. these magazines so it was stardust film fair and i used to look at these gorgeously done up faces of the film stars and every time i used to you know look at who's the makeup artist so i think it slowly crept in that there is an aspect called makeup which is an important thing so it's just that once i i just knew it that i followed my instinct that that's what i wanted to do and the next thing i knew was i had enrolled myself in bombay with bharat and doris who were my first gurus so i um, did a course with them and then yeah there was no looking back after which started small but i always believe start small dream big with makeup uh, how was your journey how did you go ahead and start i mean when you started doing makeup like you said you were i think 22 23 it's 23 have, and a half yes i don't think it was that easy because not a lot of people at that time look at makeup as making it your profession or being a ma- makeup artist could be a profession right very true i had to struggle and i think i have struggled so much to make makeup a prestigious profession in bangalore because initially nobody could understand what's the difference between a salon or a makeup artist what does a makeup artist do and i am still trying to explain why makeup anybody can do it but it's how you do it you know you can have all the products in the world but it's how you use it and that is what is art and that is why we call makeup artists so um So I think it's when you set your heart to it everything just falls into place there are struggles nothing comes easy I started off by charging 500 a face my first shoot was a disaster so um I think that's what I say that they we have made mistakes but it's the mistakes that you do that may, you know you ensure that you never repeat them again and that's what makes you perfect so if you're a perfectionist and you're an artist you will keep aspiring for that So when I started off yes it was extremely difficult I would say but I don't look at it as you know being difficult or a struggle because if you love what you're doing yeah. it's it's a process and I enjoyed every bit of it. Okay so Gauri uh people in the fashion industry or in the makeup industry or even in the media for example you know you guys have to go through or go under so much pressure to look gorgeous and beautiful and stay up to the up to date when it comes to makeup trends or just looking good and um looking beautiful all the time H- how do you handle that pressure i think having enough knowledge is important uh you don't have to be someone else and i always think it's you that makes you so you have to stick to that you don't have to try to be someone different 
and I think that's what I've always done. Stick to your guns, stick to your instincts. I think as a woman, my instincts have been very strong. And just believe in yourself, be confident about it. And I don't think, of course, that's what I say, there's knowledge about a certain way, you know, you know what uh, outfits to wear that flat to you or the right makeup. So I, whenever I have my workshops, which I do have for uh, would-be brides, for, uh, you know, normal people who want to learn makeup, I always tell them, I said, just have five products in your kit or have like seven outfits, but have the ones that suit you the best. Don't go completely overboard trying to get this and that and trying to perfect the look. First master that and then move on. And I think that's what has helped me and I always guide people to do just that. Not to, Of course, if you have the knowledge of using 25 by 25, yeah. but I'm saying if you're starting off, start off right. And I think that itself, once you know you're doing the things right, it builds your confidence and it, it just gets better. But do you think stereotyping like that is the right thing to do? You think? You, do you think people out there should be doing it? Stereotyping, I would say, it's it's. there's a lot that goes back end. You know, I mean, if you look at a model and to perfect a model or a film star, we know the flaws. Okay, so there is Photoshop, there are camera lights, you have three stylists who are probably looking you the best, you know, making you look your best, who are giving you the best outfits probably. So you can't compare yourself in terms of perfection to them. I think if you're perfect and you're comfortable and you're happy within yourself, I think that's what gives you the confidence. Just being you is your confidence. Okay, tell us a little bit about your academy. Like you mentioned, uh, you teach ma makeup as well. Yes. So uh, let's get a little bit into that and tell us about your academy, when you started it, uh, how it's going and all of that. I started my academy. It was, I think I have, it was about approximately 10 years, 10 years when I started off. And it took me about nine years to actually believe in myself that I am ready to train now which again I followed my instincts but yeah I mean it was at that point I said you know what I want to empower women I want women to learn I want them to be financially uh, stable in terms of you know having your own power I, I believe a lot in that and I I was given this entire knowledge that I had and I didn't want to die with it so I said let's you know impart it share the knowledge and that's how I started off and um, so far, Touchwood, all the students that I've trained have been immensely successful and have made me so proud. So I just enjoy imparting knowledge. I enjoy teaching. And that's what got me to the academy, which has grown pretty big now. Yeah. Great. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Also, I wanted to know, uh, can makeup be used as a tool to empower women? Definitely. Definitely the right makeup. I think it's about giving you confidence. I would say there's no right or wrong in mm -hmm. terms of, you know. Yeah. But if it gives you the confidence, that's what you want. So makeup, definitely, it gives me the confidence. I'm probably someone who's not a makeup person, may not want to, they'll say, you know, it's not about makeup. But as long as you're confident. But as a makeup artist, I would say everyone looks nice with makeup. If it helps you, go for it. So growing up, uh, were you very confident? Did you always use makeup or, you know, when you reached your 20s, is that when you were introduced to makeup? Did you start using makeup? I look like a disaster on my wedding. <laughs> oh, God. So, no, I don't believe that. No, I'm serious. I didn't know anything about makeup. So it was like when I started off, um, your confidence grows. Every time you do something right, you appreciate it for it. It's, it's, I think it's a progress. It's a process of, you know, growth. So as and when you know that you're doing good, you appreciate it, you move on to the next level and next level and next level. And obviously you're not born with everything, as I said. So it's just been a progress of time and a lot of mistakes and a lot of hard work and a lot of, uh, you know, trials and errors that you do. But yeah, at some point that's what gives you the confidence when you're done with that. And, you know, so, yeah. Because I remember like growing up, even like if I used to use makeup at home, I had to go through a lot of criticism uh, because uh, your parents don't like it. Uh, they ask you questions um, on the basis of, okay, you know, whose wedding are you going to? If you just apply a little bit of eyeliner and lipstick or, uh, you know, uh, people out there, you know, your um, friends in college or in school, uh, you know, they look at you as if, you know, you're some outcast or something like that. But, you know, that's where we come in, Priyanka, because if makeup is done right, you know, it can look fabulous. The whole idea is to look effortlessly beautiful. Yeah. When people try too hard or probably use the wrong products, 
that's when it looks it's way too much so i i think if you look like nowadays i have uh, you know girls who are coming to me at the age of 17 if they're traveling wow. abroad or you know they're going to study and they want to have the basic knowledge so it's about you know studying the personality they're still young you're not going to teach them everything you want to teach them everything of course as to what suits them so whether it's a bride whether it's fashion whether it's um, just someone who's coming to learn it's it's about customizing the look it's it's judging the personality now it's not that one size fits all in makeup so it's it once you customize it whether it's whether i'm teaching you whether it's as i said a bridal or a fashion thing the whole look becomes effortless and that's what we aim at that's, that's what, what we strive we for yeah so gauri tell me Have you faced criticism in your career, like of when it course. comes to makeup? Of course, I don't think you become a perfectionist without criticism. I I actually like criticism. I'm very critical about my own work as well. I always take criticism optimistically, and that's what's made me better at my art. So, um, I think as long as you're optimistic about it and take it in a positive manner, it only makes you better. Yes. Okay. So, uh, you do makeup. Um, you do go ahead and um, do makeup to and attend these fashion shows right you do makeup to a lot of models and celebrities during these fashion shows yes so tell us a little bit about it like what sort of pressure do you face what do you how do you prepare for you know to face such challenges and pressure during such fashion shows i think the fashion shows you have a limited time and you have models ranging anywhere between 6 to 15 so earlier when i started off i didn't have any help and i used to do it all solo So there's a lot of thinking that goes in because you're discussing the look with the designer or you know the uh, the coordinator will tell you just you know this is the kind of look that we're looking for. So um you plan the look you have to estimate a time and then they are rehearsals so there's a lot of pressure but it's it's also a lot of fun because when you work under pressure at that point at the end of it you're like oh. you know you've done it the satisfaction But completely so you have i mean i remember how i used to do it it was like i used to time myself for like if i have 3 hours and i have six models sorry if i have six models i need to estimate myself to 3 hours now in the 3 hours i have to finish um that means 30 minutes per model with the makeup and hair because i didn't have a hair stylist at that point so that way it used to go in 3 hours flat i had to finish so i used to time myself 30 minutes done so you try to do shortcuts and that's what made me better too in terms of you know getting quicker with your art there is a lot of pressure though isn't it how do you prepare for it like from sort of do you do anything on the previous day to prepare for that sort of pressure i think preparing always makes it easier but there are times where you're given no time to prepare and you have to be very spontaneous in your entire look and finish the entire thing but i have come to a point where now i want perfection and i will prepare i okay. will prepare okay yeah any any tips any special On, thing do you sort of follow a ritual or a routine should i say to prepare i think if if you you have to put in more time more effort more hard work if you want to be good at what you're doing and um, if i do have one look there are times where i have called three models for the same look figured out tried the entire look there are times i've spent the entire night i remember i had this one shoot and uh, i was the only makeup artist they trusted this was about 11 years ago we didn't have mac we didn't have this products in india yet okay. so i had to create that entire look out of just you know roadside glitter water paints and i did wow. it i did it so it's it's i think it's more challenging when you have limited products mm-hmm. i mean at that point i'm talking about the now it life's become so so much more easier because yeah. you have products about anything you want to do this or just order it online but yeah that time it was challenging it was it was fun it was, i enjoyed that entire process okay so you've uh, you've done you've been a makeup artist for fashion shows you've also done a little bit of advertisements haven't you Print. i've done everything because when you're a makeup artist you do everything it's like you given options whether it's magazine covers whether it's uh, i mean everything everything <laughs> i can't even remember what I'm all i've sure. done advertising yeah. and films and serials and advertising wow. uh, editorials i mean there there's just so many things that you land up how how is it different is it is there a difference well there is a difference in everything yes because if you're doing fashion photography your makeup will be completely different if you're doing a video or film it's different if you're doing a say a song a uh, makeup mm-hmm. for a song and it's for a movie it's going to be different so everything has its own element that once you understand as an artist that that's the element i have to catch and that's what makes you a better artist because you're putting that out because as soon as you 
hit the jackpot in terms of saying, yeah, that's, you know, you've nailed the look. That's what we're looking for because that's what we're trying to do. To, if you're giving me a brief and I'm trying to understand it and I'm putting it out. Okay. So, okay, coming back to Lana's look, um, do you think a look like this will be accepted in today's society, if you may say? But I would say it's extremely high fashion. Not everyone understands high fashion. Everyone's, everyone thinks that makeup is about just pretty sweet looks. But um, high fashion is something that I enjoy doing and that's what really pushes me. So I think the few people who understand it are the ones who actually come to me also. I mean, if they want to learn and they understand. It's like even when you're an artist, if I want to train under a certain artist, I can relate to their looks. Mm -hmm. You know, I like those looks. I want to learn how to do that. So those are the kind of people I'm looking at because eventually for an artist, it's about, you know, you admire my work, you appreciate my work, and then you come to me. So it's it's more like, it's like a certificate of, you know, yeah. that it's... So you do get that freedom to sort of decide and choose on the looks that you want to work on. Well, with my academy, I have complete freedom. <laughs> and that's why I enjoy teaching and I enjoy it because you can go all out. There's no one telling you don't do this or don't do that. Yeah. I mean, I have complete creativity and I enjoy pushing myself to the maximum. But not outside? Of? Like for fashion shows, for example. Is your input taken? Do you give out ideas definitely, on definitely. the concept? But with fashion shows, see, we have limitations. Now, if I have to make, say, 12 headgears, mm -hmm. then there's obviously pre-planning. Supposedly, if this was a look for a show, yeah. then we have to make 12 headgears. Now, do we want the same headgears? Do we do it separately? There's a lot of mm -hmm. thought process into everything that, you know, you execute. So you do try to make uh, your work more creative and sort of push the limits. That's all I live for. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So Gauri Kapoor, the makeup artist, or Gauri Kapoor, the teacher, because you also teach makeup, what do you prefer? Like, which of these roles do you prefer? What, what, what excites you more? I think if I wasn't a good makeup artist, I wouldn't be a good teacher. But, but a lot of makeup artists out there are also not able to teach other people, right? For example, you're right. Yeah, either you have the aptitude. I think it's it's I have, I play different roles. When I'm a makeup artist, I'm I'm different. But when you're a teacher, you're different because you have so much more patience because yes. you're imparting knowledge. I mean, patience is something that you have to live with in this profession, which by God's grace, I'm blessed with a lot. But now I'm running out of it. <laughs> but yes, but I do love. When it comes to work, there's nothing else. There's nothing else that I can think of. Um, so as a teacher, yes, it's, it needs a lot of patience and it's also, I think it's about, I, I, I wouldn't have started teaching if I wanted to hide anything. So it's about whatever I've mm -hmm. learned, you know, through the years, through all the international um, courses that I've been to, have done. It's If I'm not putting out on a platter for my students, there's no use teaching. So for me, I'm completely transparent and completely honest and that's what I love doing because I'm doing it from my heart because I love teaching. It's my passion. Do you not fear competition? I encourage competition. I create it. <laughs> wow. I, I create competition, right? Because all the students that I am training it eventually... Doesn't, it doesn't... You're not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it. Because if I was, I wouldn't have started teaching. I did have someone tell me, why are you creating competition? But I was like, that's the only thing that's going to make me better. So, yeah, I mean, I'm probably on a different school of thought. But I do enjoy competition. Good to know. So, uh, you've covered, you've sort of done makeup on a girl next door versus a, you know, a supermodel and also celebrities. What is the difference and what do you enjoy doing more? I think celebrities, because they have perfect features, I would say that's a given. But when they're sitting on my seat, whether it's a girl next door, whether it's a celebrity, whether it's anybody a model, for me it's the same. If I don't give in my 200% at that point of time. Uh, so... Yeah, I would say models and celebrities only because they have, they are paid because of the features and things. So they do carry off our looks much better. But for me, it's like, you know, everyone needs to look like a star. For me, everyone's a star. Um, tell us a little bit about your experiences, like working with celebrities. Do you have any experiences that you can think of or something that you, you know, you remember? Well, I remember when Deepika was just off to Bombay and she'd come to me for her personal course where she wanted to learn makeup. She said, Gauri, I don't know anything. So I enjoyed teaching her. Then I remember Anushka Sharma when she was again a Bangalore girl and uh, she actually modelled for me. She walked the ramp for my uh, store, which was in St. Mark's Road. So yes, I do have a lot of fond memories. Other than that, you'll end up doing a lot of celebrities, but because they were Bangalore girls, we tend to, you know, we had interacted a lot more. I had, done, I had helped Deepika with her film as well. 
so yeah i mean they, they deepika was completely down to earth so was anushka but you i think they always had that star quality so you you yeah. knew then yeah. <laughs> that they probably make really big stars absolutely from there. i think they just had a star quality I, i didn't really think too much about whether they become a celebrity but they they had something about them that stood apart because at that point again you know you were also young you were also kind of learning the first few celebrities that you're working with yeah okay so gauri we have a very interesting and exciting round for you wow that day <laughs> so what i'll do is i'll put you on the spotlight Okay, I'm not okay. supposed to be excited about it. I don't know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> excited, a little nervous maybe. All right. Yeah, because it's like a rapid fire. Okay. So I'll put you on the spotlight, All right. and I'll ask you some questions, and I will not give you any time to think about what you're going to say to them. So you just have to be really fast and quick and just answer. Lovely. Let me give it a shot. <laughs> give it a shot. Yeah. Okay, great. So we're done with discussing about fashion shows and celebrity makeup. Let's talk a little bit about bridal makeup. Sure. How important do you think it is for a bride to learn makeup or you know do the pre the pre makeup, pre makeup pre lessons. Makeup lessons? I mean pre bridal lessons yes. Yeah. Pre yeah. So I think it's and I've had a lot of brides who come here to learn because there are lots of them who don't know which are the right products, what is the kind of a look that I want, how to achieve that. Obviously you're going to be socializing, you're going to be invited and you want to look nice because And also because that's such an important day in a, a girl's life. Why well, here I'm dividing it into one is the pre-bridal classes. Okay so that is for the bride to learn yeah. on how to look perfect on every occasion. On so every occasion. So on every occasion because what I teach is from a 5 minute makeover because you don't have all the time in the world to get ready sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I teach them a 5 minute makeover. I teach them if you're going for a wedding what to do, how to combine the two, any look they possibly want because people follow trends blindly. So you I have to look at them and say you know what don't go for that just just do this this is working well for you. So when you do it and actually show it to them and they say yeah gori you're right you know this is really not working for me. So the whole idea of coming to a makeup artist is one uh, we simplify your life two we giving you tips on the right products. You do not have to go to one store and buy 20 products. You can buy 10 products from different because not every product of one brand is fabulous. So we help you because we burnt our fingers in terms of buying spending knowing which products work so we give it to you bang on like this is what's going to work for you you try it out and that's what they really appreciate because it's an investment it's an invest investment for life because once you have the right products you do not need to brush up and then you you know when you know how to do your makeup you can just look at a video and say ha huh, that's the way she's done it and you can get better with it yourself you know but learning the basics i think is very very essential very the right basics not just for the brides i think i think for every woman for everybody there. but yeah when i do have pre bridal because you know they want to go a little more glam they want a little bling Uh, so it kind of depends on. So I just segregate the classes to pre-bridal, or you know, if they are younger kids, I try to put them together. So it's those kind of things because the tips are then very, very similar. So I kind of focus on those kind of things. Then again, if they are working people, then you have a different thing because they are not going to spend. They don't have the time. You know, it's like they just want to spend 10 minutes and they're out of there. Out of there. So yeah. you you customize the entire look that you're trying to teach them to make it simpler for them and not like rocket science. Ki I have 100 products and I don't. Know what to do with them. That's me. So yeah, <laughs> that I have a hundred products and I don't know what to do with them. I have had students who've come with like entire kits and opened it and said, "Gauri, this is all the makeup I have, and what do I do with it?" And I'm like, "Damn, you don't need so much." So you know, it's it's I like that. I need these glasses, Gauri. Yes, I, definitely. I, I will let you. In. I'll definitely <laughs> inform you about those. So that is the pre-bridal, or you know, anyone who wants to learn makeup, who wants to, it does give you confidence. I I definitely believe in that. That it gives you confidence. So that is one aspect, whether you know you're doing the pre-bridal or you know the knowledge to look better after you're married as well, and um, even otherwise. So when now when you're a bride, now that I think is again a very essential aspect for any bride because. you can spend on jewelry you can spend on clothes outfits and you know everything else and destination weddings but if you mess up on the makeup artist you <laughs> your look is gone your look is gone because it's the makeup artist only because i'm a makeup artist i can say that and i look like a disaster on my wedding myself so it's like the makeup artist plays the most important role in getting everything together yes you have to have great outfits but there are so many times where we have you know salvaged a uh, you know loose blouses so it's the right draping the right sometimes you know the hair or the skins have break out so there are lots of issues that we have faced with brides that we uh, take care of which actually help immensely and also if it's not the entire look now if she has five functions 
and if she's not looking wow because everyone says no we are having an engagement or a sangeet we don't want heavy makeup i said it's not about heavy makeup you need to look like a star whether you have three functions one function or five functions so that's what we as makeup artists or at you, least i do <laughs> you have to look like yeah. a star at every every Absolutely. location every function okay so with the makeup that you teach them so do you customize it according to their skin type and also what suits them because for example a product might suit you but it might not suit me so do you also look at that definitely that's what we make up artists for and that's what we charge for <laughs> so I, we are looking at it now if you come to me i mean i can look at you and i already know what you probably would like I so know you know that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we do i mean that's what a good makeup artist does that you know she figures out what they want and gives it to them and that's what is appreciated and that's what gives you you know more name and fame mm. great so are you excited gori totally <laughs> i know you what you have for me <laughs> okay great let's start your first question yep what is makeup to you my life okay bridal makeup or a high end fashion makeup now that's difficult but high end i would choose it <laughs> gives me more creative freedom it gives you more freedom yeah. okay who was your inspiration anything and everything i take inspiration from anything is there a person who can be your inspiration or who has been your inspiration i think there lots of there's not one inspiration lots of them lots of them yeah. okay an artist can get inspiration from anything and anywhere that's what i said okay So five must have products to look gorgeous all day. Concealer, mascara, lipstick, eyebrow filler if your eyebrows are not so great and uh, and a little blush over a little color on your face. Little color is very yes. important. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. What is your makeup mantra? What is my makeup mantra? Now for for a makeup artist I have lots of mantras. <laughs> But something that you've always followed, and something that you stand by, no matter what, anything can go wrong, but this will not go wrong. Perfection. I try to be as perfect as I can. So, what is that first thought that comes to your mind when you pick up a makeup brush? Create. <laughs> Create. Yeah. So it's just like a blank canvas. It's a blank you... canvas, and your canvas is always different, and you're creating different looks every time. It's like you you're painting every day with a different canvas. Okay so uh when you first pick a model for a shoot or to do a makeup concept what do you first look at her like what is that first thing that you look at her the features in the skin definitely the features features for sure that's what makes a model like features is in what do you have in makeup in terms of you know the almond eyes are the perfect shape if you have uh, you cannot have a very long nose because you know especially for makeup shots it works for ramp but when we looking we are very critical when we take models for makeup so their skin their features they have to have fuller lips because then they can carry up everything they have to have a certain but there are there are times where you know imperfection also is fabulous so it really depends on the person who actually walks in the concept that we have and how we put it together okay what is that one worst makeup mistake that you've made my first shoot i didn't even powder her face <laughs> the shoot was a disaster <laughs> I completely forgot that step. I overlooked it and I did the entire makeup and by the end of it I didn't even realize and that time you didn't have you know video cameras or I mean the 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 yeah screens. the yeah screen yeah. that you could look at and it was a disaster. If you had a choice to become a lipstick color or a lipstick shade which one would you choose? I'd mix five. <laughs> You'll mix five? I love mixing lipsticks. I love creating colors. So you okay I didn't know you could do that. Yeah of course whether it's eye shadows whether it's lipsticks that's why we make up artists just mix. Yeah. Okay so you, I mean so that's what I'm saying when I start when I started off we had like five eye shadows and we didn't have colors that you could buy off the rack so we had to create colors. Yeah. So even then like which is that one shade that you know for sure you can't go wrong with. I love to mix red and pink. I red love that shade. Red and pink. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. The even times I mix red, pink, and purple, and that also looks wow. <laughs> red, pink, and purple. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if Gauri Kapoor, if you wouldn't be a makeup artist, what would you be today? I love designing clothes. I love doing interiors. I think as an artist, you're creative in everything you do. You just, you know, but it's one thing that you choose and you pursue and you give your heart out to it. But so it it would be in any creative. Any field. creative. So anything creative you'd be out there. Yeah. Even probably painting or writing. Well, I was a painter, but my second passion is creating outfits. So I love, I love designing, and I love doing interiors. I love doing up spaces. Okay. Okay. If I give you two options, um, makeup or makeover, what would you choose and why? Oh, I would say in one word, makeup is 
temporary makeover is permanent because it gives you the confidence it's it's your tool to use anytime you want very well said okay uh, with that question your rapid fire round ends thank you how did i do do i get marks for it <laughs> you did great you were really you thank you didn't you. even stumble you just you were so fast and quick and you just knew what to say when that's good thank you very much yeah, you nailed it i loved it <laughs> i enjoyed it so gauri on an ending note what would you like to tell all of you who are so watching this show out there i think it's about just getting better as a human being in everything you do whether the way you dress the way you do your makeup it's the right knowledge keep working towards becoming a better you in any possible way inner and outer uh thank you so much lana for being with us today also um how do you think gauri is as a makeup artist No, she is not also makeup artist. She is a wonderful person. She is kind. She is really amazing. Great, good enough. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you so much for taking time out and sitting with us here today. Thank you, Gauri. You've been amazing, Lana. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Priyanka. It Thank was lovely I know, being just, on this show. I know just for just to take this time out and give us the slot and for us to come here and cover what you've done today. I Thank you so it. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much Lana and thank you so much Gauri. It was lovely having a chat with you today. Same here. Thank you so much you guys for watching this episode with us today. I'm pretty sure you found it useful, entertaining and had as much fun as I did with Gauri Kapoor. Signing off until next time. This is Priyanka. You're watching YTV, your channel. <laughs>